Hi, I'm Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to discover the power of the Tone Curve Panel in Lightroom Classic. While the basic panel offers a lot of control over the tonal values in your image, with the Tone Curve, we have even more precision and control. There are two curves in the Tone Curve Panel, the Parametric Curve and the Tone Curve. We're going to start with the Parametric Curve, and when using the Parametric Curve, I would suggest that you set your black and white points in the basic panel first. I'll tap the J key in order to toggle the visibility of my shadow and highlight clipping warnings, then move the white slider over to the right, watching the histogram, but also making sure that I don't see any red displayed in the image, which would be telling me that my highlights are being clipped to pure white without detail. So I'll back off on that. And then for the black slider, I'll move that to the left, as soon as I see any blue overlay, that tells me that I've clipped those values to black without detail. So again, I'll just back off on that. Okay, let's return to the Tone Curve panel and we can see that the Parametric Curve is divided into four regions, your highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. We can use any of the sliders to edit the tonal values within that specific range in our image. We can also click directly in this curve area. If I click and drag up or drag down, it will select the corresponding slider for that area. And we can see that this curve is actually limited in the amount that we can change any specific range. So I can't drag beyond the highlighted area in the curve. Now, in order to edit the tonal range that is changed by the sliders, we can reposition any of these tick marks. This lets us define what tones in the image should be changed when we move the different sliders or drag in the curve. For example, if I reposition this tick mark over to the right, now the number of tones that will be affected when I move the light slider is greater, and the number of tones when I move the highlights is going to be less. If we want to reset a slider, we can double click on it, in order to reset all of the sliders, we can double click the word region. And to reset any of the ranges, we can double click on the tick mark. All right, let's move to the point curve. Now the point curve can have a maximum of 16 points, not just those four regions like the parametric curve. And we can change the black and white point. So in the basic panel, I will double click on tone in order to reset the whites and the blacks. Then I'll return to the Tone Curve, and using the preview of the histogram, I'm going to move the point in the lower left over to the right. If I move it too far, we can see that blue overlay from my shadow clipping warnings, so I'll want to back off. And then I'll do the same thing for the point in the upper right, moving it over to the left. Again, not too far, we don't want to see those red highlights, so I'll back off on that. There are typically two different approaches to using this curve. Method one would be you drag on the curve in order to make your changes, and then you would set down additional points to limit the changes to a specific tonal range. All right, I'm gonna use Command Z in order to undo those two points. And method two would be you would set down points where you want the image to remain the same. In this case, I'll set one in my shadows and then in my highlights, and then set the third point in my midtones in order to make my changes. Now, keep in mind, when you increase the slope of a curve, you're adding contrast to one area. Basically, we're spreading out the tonal values over a larger range, but because there's a limited number of values in any given image, the curve will become flatter in other areas. And where the curve is flat, there are going to be flat areas of tone or color in the image area. So we would want to decrease that so that we no longer see those flat areas. All right, I'm going to right click or on Mac, you could control click, to delete these three control points, but leave my black and white points set. Both the parametric and the point curve have a targeted adjustment tool. We can select that or use the keyboard shortcut Command Option Shift T on Mac or Control Alt Shift T on Windows in order to make on-screen adjustments. 
if I position my cursor over this dark area. Now when I click, the tool icon is hidden, but Lightroom Classic will put a point on the curve and then I can drag up to lighten that area or drag down in order to darken it. All right, let me undo that. Select the Targeted Adjustment tool again, and this time, instead of clicking, I'll just position the tool over the value that I want to target, and I can use the arrow keys to increase or decrease that value. Tapping the Escape key will put the tool back. All right, I'll make a few changes to this curve, just lifting up the highlight area a bit, and then bringing down my midtones. Now, as you make changes to the tones in your image, the curve panel is also adjusting the saturation. To restrict the tone curve to only adjust the tones in the image and not the color, we can drag the Refine Saturation slider over to the left. Now we're only affecting the tones. If you want the added saturation, drag it back to the right. If there's a curve that you often use, you can use the drop-down menu in order to save that curve. Once the curve is saved, you'll be able to select it from the menu. And the adjustments that you make here are unlimited. And by that, I mean that if I double click to reset this and I wanted to invert my image, I can actually drag the white point all the way down and the black point all the way up to invert it. All right, I'll use Command Z in order to go back in time. And we can also adjust the red, green, and blue channels in an image by clicking on the corresponding icon. This can be useful for either neutralizing a color cast or for making creative color adjustments, as you can limit the adjustments to a specific tonal range in an image. For example, if I wanted to add warmth to my shadows, I could click the blue channel, then drag the curve in the shadow area towards yellow, and then to limit the effects to only the shadows, I'll click in the midtones and drag back up. If we want to preview the changes that we've made in the tone curve, we can click on the eye icon. Clicking and holding will show us without the changes in the tone curve. When I release the cursor, we see the changes. Now the tone curve is also available in masking when applying effects to a specific area of an image, but masking will be covered in another video. Excellent, I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.